Two, three, four. Run up your engine! JB says, hey Scotty, Chrysler's advertising 84 months financing on their new vehicles. What are the changes, one of their cars that lasts long? Well, I'd never buy any of those cars because they have a history of problems. Then they merged with Fiat, and now they're talking about merging that with Peugeot, the French manufacturer. I wouldn't buy any of them. Now, they're charging so much money for the vehicles that now they have to finance them for 84 months to make the payments smaller. From my experience with Chryslers, generally, by the time 84 months is over, they're probably falling apart, even before that. <laughs> it's like the people that say they fall for this. Look, I'm going to buy a car now because there's no interest car loans. Blah, blah, blah. Ha, ha, ha. There's no such thing. Yeah, they're charging you no interest on a loan. Guess what? They probably jacked the price up the car four or five grand or even more. They're going to get the money one way or the other. And the only way that they can sell these cars nowadays is if they got to give that many months payment is because they got to get the payment low enough that you're going to pay that much money. If they did it in half that, the payments would be higher and you wouldn't want to buy the car. My advice, buy a good car like a Toyota or Honda, regardless of what the financing is, and do like me. Don't even buy a new car. Let some fool buy the new car. Buy them when they're used. Save a fortune. Japanese cars that are well made like that, hey, if they can go 300,000 miles and you can buy one with 100,000 miles on it for maybe one-eighth of the price or one-fifth of the price of the new one, you're coming out like gangbusters. MT. Mittler says, what's your opinion on Chrysler Neons? One of the worst cars ever made. They were all made, I believe, in Pueblo, Mexico. And they were really one of the poorest made pieces of junk that were ever out there. Now they got good gas mileage. One time we went to the state fair in Dallas and I'm so lazy, I didn't even drive from Houston to Dallas. We flew in a plane and we rented a car. Well, we thought, oh, we'll rent a cheap car. Who cares? The airport's only like eight miles from the fairgrounds from the state fair, right? Whew. My wife said, that's the worst car I've ever been in riding and you can feel every bump. It was a terrible piece of junk. They don't notice they don't make them anymore. It was Chrysler's attempt to make an economy car and they went to economy and of course the quality control in Mexico isn't all that hot. So they were economy cars that weren't that well built but they did get good gas mileage. I would never want to own one of those things. They were junkers. Emmanuel Kellner says where can I buy a used car but not from the dealership? Well there's lots of places they all have their pluses and minuses. A lot of guys use Craigslist because you can go in, you can look for certain cars and say, how many miles do you want to drive to see them? And if it's a private individual, you could get a very good deal. But, eh, you know, the sleaze bags have come in like they always do in a used car business. And a lot of the guys there are actually selling a used car from a used car lot. And they work for the used car lot, but they pretend it's their car. So then you call them and they'll say, well, where are you? And they're, you're here and they're there. And they'll say, well, let's meet in the middle in a Denny's parking lot, right? And then they'll try to sell you the car. But if you buy it from them, then you find out the title wasn't even in that guy's name, and it was being sold by a used car lot, and these guys are kind of breaking the law, because here in Texas, if you sell more than a certain amount of cars a year, I don't know if it's three or something, but whatever it is, if you sell more than that in one year, you got to get a used car license, dealer license, and you have to be bonded, so if you screw people over, the bond can repay the people for the money you ripped them off for, so there's a lot of sleazy lists like that going around. You know, ask your friends, neighbors, and all that stuff. Craigslist isn't bad, but you never know if you're going to get a private individual or not. Any Anytime you're looking at a used car, demand to see the title, see if their name, if their name's not on it, you don't buy it. Wayne McKinnon says, can you use synthetic oils in a car that is using conventional oil? All right, synthetic oils are excellent oils. All they are is basically regular oil that's been treated with steam or acid or something. The only truly synthetic one is that Pennzoil Pure Platinum, which is made from natural gas somewhere in the Middle East, where they turn natural gas into oil, and it's actually true synthetic oil that's pure. It's very expensive oil, works great, costs an awful lot of money. Now, if you got a really old car, it's like 10, 15 years old, it's got 150,000 miles. I never advise switching from conventional to synthetic because a lot of times they'll either start burning or leaking oil. Engineers tell me, oh, Scotty, that can't happen, but I've seen it happen so many times, I know it can happen, so the engineers are living in an ivory tower and I'm living in the real world. But if you got a low mileage car and you want to switch, go ahead, but if you do, then stick. It's best to stick to one oil. Always use the same oil in your car if you have no problems because even Scotty here, I don't know what additives they're putting in those car oils. They're 
uh, the car companies and the motor oil companies are always telling me, oh, this is better than that. I say, what's exactly in it? Well, we can't tell you because that's our trade secret. It's patented. So you never know. They might say it has all kinds of additives, but they'll never tell you how much and what exactly the additives are. So if you find ones that work, stick to them. Rip Dog 1981 says, Scotty, I got 11 Ford Flex, 140,000 miles. I have noise coming from the front end. When I turn at slow speed, it sounds like a spring release. And any ideas? It's probably your struts. The struts are like shock absorbers. The shock absorbing unit is inside the strut. Then there's a housing, and housing has springs on the top. And when those wear out, especially if they have the rubber inserts that they ride on, the rubber inserts have a tendency of rotting. And then when they rot, the metal spring is sitting on the metal inside of the strut, and they'll ding, bong, bing, bing, and you got to replace them. That's probably what it is. I see that all the time because that thing's what? It's nine years old, and a lot of times the rubber will rot. And if you live up north like Detroit or Buffalo, it'll rust, and then the rust will make it go boing de boing. Move down to Texas with me, and they don't rust. <laughs> Tanny C. Aggie says, Scotty, RAV4 regular hybrid of commuting 80 miles each day. Depends on your commute. Realize the hybrids are phenomenal at gas mileage in town, but they always get better gas mileage in stop and go traffic than they do on a highway because you're not regenerating electricity on a highway, you're just driving. So let's say you live in Houston, Texas. You're doing that kind of traveling where you're stopping, going, stopping, going, get the hybrid because the hybrid gets stop and go better gas mileage. But say you live somewhere else where your 80 mile commute is 40 miles going 60 miles an hour, get the regular one because it'll get about the same gas mileage and you'll pay less of the vehicle. It's only stop and go traffic that gets better gas mileage with a hybrid. So if you don't do stop and go, a lot of highway driving, get the regular one. You're not going to get the advantage. But if you live in a city and you're always stopping and going, that's why I saw so many hybrid Ubers when I was in Seattle because all the stop and going of the Uber drivers, they got phenomenal gas mileage. And they charge less too. I paid a lot less for Uber rides in Seattle than I did here in Houston where they're just regular guys in regular cars. Hardly any hybrid uh, Ubers I've been here in Houston. Jerry De La Cruz says, Scotty, have you ever worked on a Jaguar X-Type 3.0 V6? What things do you see go bad? Yeah, I've worked on them. see just about everything go bad. One of the junkiest cars ever made. A long time ago, 40s, 50s, were cutting edge, speed cars, sports cars. But oh man, they just diluted that thing down as time went out. On. And now, I mean, it was bad enough the Indians bought the company, but then even they couldn't make money, so they sold it to the Chinese. Now the Chinese own Jaguar. And even to this day, I was reading a few months ago, the Chinese people who bought Jaguars in China were protesting at the headquarters that they had there in China about how poor the quality was of the ones that they had bought. So if the Chinese in a communist country are complaining that this Chinese company is making bad cars, that tells you they make crap. <laughs> That's from the horse's mouth there. James Self says, Scotty, what's the difference in hydraulic and motor oil? Okay, hydraulic oil, cars names are cool because they always mean what they say. Hydraulic fluid is for hydraulic systems. It can take a tremendous amount of pressure and it's built to take pressure and lubricate. And it's usually relatively thin and very refined. Motor oil, on the other hand, is to put in what? Motors. So it's got to take a certain amount of pressure, but nothing like in hydraulic. Say you got power steering, that might be 1400 pounds per square inch. And engine oil, ah, your pump might put out 65 pounds per square inch. So it doesn't have to take so much pressure, but it has to lubricate pistons that pine, slide back and forth, bearings that spin, and in a motorcycle, the engine oil also does the transmission, it has to take the shear of the gears, and a lot of modern engines have a lot of gears in them, and it's got to lubricate that, so the motor oil is much more complex. Don't ever put hydraulic oil in your engine, it doesn't mix good. <laughs> Kirk Kennedy says, Scotty, what you take on Harleys? Are the older ones better than the new ones? Well, certain periods are really good and certain periods weren't. And recently, I forget who bought them. Some big company bought them. They don't own themselves anymore. They got bought out. So they don't even run their own company. And their sales are way down too. It's The, the problem with Harley Davidson is the whole thing has gone on an image. For a long time, until maybe 10 years ago, they were using a V-twin design that was like from the early 1900s. And it made a great noise noise, but for what they did, they didn't put out that much power. You know, you get a Harley Davidson and, and maybe it put out, you know, 80 horsepower. You get a Japanese motorcycle and put out 200 <laughs> horsepower. There's no way the two could compete because one's a modern design and one's an old antique dinosaur. They tried to modernize them. They did that one with Porsche where they had water cooled heads and it was a Porsche design engine, but it had a big radiator and Harley drivers didn't like the look of the big radiator. They liked an air cooled engine sound with no radiator with a naked engine. So 
with them, it's more style than function. And if you like the style, go ahead, it's your money. But Japanese run circles with any design. I mean, the Japanese have made various V-twin engines that work much better. They just don't have the Harley name. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.